YouTube, it's your boy 41 Pop. We back with another video. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We back in the building with another 1090 Jake video. Tap in. It's 1090 Jake. When I'm rocking with y'all, y'all rocking with me. And for this video, let's get right into it. When it comes to killer rappers, a few names may come to mind. But just outside of Houston, Texas, a new killer would emerge into the spotlight with a smile. The reign of terror, now documented gang leader Christian Cavazos will spend life in prison. He killed five people in four months and pled guilty to it. A judge sentenced him today after prosecutors showed some of these murders were captured on video. When Cavazos drove by with other gang members shooting dozens and dozens of rounds. Gang! Five people is crazy. No bull. What? You want some, bro? Nigga, two gangsters. Shamil with All he listening to is drill rap, nigga. NBA young boy. What's going on, child? Y'all ain't, ain't about that. Now, when son Ryan was shot in his car in September 20. Wait, we got Shamil with McGowan's son Ryan was shot in his car in September 2019. He kept hunting my son down like an animal. Bop, 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 uh, how many shots? No shit. 20. Okay. 20. You said what I did and I'm clapping the witness. Clap. Y'all niggas gonna be in this house. Y'all niggas gonna be in this house with me. This nigga say, you say I did it, then I'm clapping the witness. Clap. Hey, I'm bars. Y'all niggas gonna be in this house. Y'all niggas gonna be in this house with me. Listen. Go catch somebody. You gonna be in this house with me. Can you please let me talk? Hey, you are. Bro. A rap beef would turn into a brutal killing spree, and in less than four months, a rival rapper was missing part of his skull, while five others were left dead. No one was spared. A 22-year-old cameraman died before his camera hit the ground. Grandparents were gunned down outside of their home, and the rapper's mother would even be arrested for allegedly using her old job to find her son's enemy's address so he could attack. Damn. The suburbs of Houston would be in terrorized. What's a family tree? The feds were being called in. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down the murderous history of Texas rapper Weddo 10K. Damn. Born in 2001, Christian Cavajos Jr. would grow up in the suburbs of Houston, primarily around Cypress and Jersey Village, with Mexican parents. Let me see this. Primarily Belair Mission, Cinco Ranch, Bunker Hill Village, Jersey Village, 80. Ain't look like nowhere I'm gonna live, so I'm good. Be around Cypress, right, Jersey Jersey Village, Village, avoid that shit. With Mexican parents, he'd be nicknamed Huero, a Spanish term for someone with fair skin. He'd play football for Campbell Middle School, and early photos would show he came from a large, middle-class family. Even those on Reddit would point out how it seemed he had a great childhood, and the fact that he was in a two-story home, or how he and his sister had prescription glasses and she had braces. These were all signs of money, or at the very least, parents that cared. But things aren't always as they appear. Then I got the drum. Hey, yo, that's his sister? That's her. That, 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 that innocent girl on the, on the, on the our left side? You know what I'm saying? Yo, right side. Not always as they appear. You mm, 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 mm. got the Drake on. Then I got more clips. Yeah, the braces off though. Hey, yeah, maybe the family into some shit. It's the seven six two for me. A YouTube Yo. premium isn't clear. how or why back things back. started but when the match lit the streets were on fire Weddo 10k was a member of a gang known as 10k while cash out ace was a member of cash out and on september 6 2019 
the first body would drop. So far, no one has been arrested. The shooter still on the loose. Detectives say pistols and a rifle were fired up and down this block. Evidence markers, crime scene tape, and a stolen SUV riddled with bullet holes. Evidence of the deadly shooting early this morning. Somebody was screaming around here. Tina lives close by. Her family heard the screams, gunshots, and called 911. The shots fired. There were multiple shots fired. We haven't even started counting yet. It was so many. It's really sad and really feel bad about it. Investigators say two young men were shot inside this SUV. One died on scene, the other fighting for their life in the hospital. He received several gunshot wounds. The crime scene expansive, stretching around a quarter of a mile, bullet casings everywhere. Investigators believe shots were fired between the SUV and a white sedan that sped away. However, detectives aren't sure who pulled the trigger first. At this time, we don't know if they are suspects or victims. Right now, authorities don't know the motive and have not identified the dead man, and they're asking anyone with information to come forward. It was 4.52 in the morning when the homicide unit was made aware of a shooting on Winfern Road. Just outside of a gated community, 19-year-old Ryan McGowan lay dead in the back seat of a stolen SUV. Ryan was a member of Cash Out, known as Cash Out Spaz. He'd been shot in the back, the bullet exiting his chest. Officers would observe 223, 9mm, and 357 SIG shell casings trailing Damn. down the road. Officers would that later learn that Spaz wasn't alone. He was with two friends, one of which was named Trenton Steele. They were all beefing with 10K, so they drove to 10K territory in a stolen SUV after learning a 10K member lived in a nearby apartment complex. Mm. While lurking in enemy territory, they were spotted by a dark colored sedan that pulled up and opened fire striking the driver of the SUV and causing him to crash. Trent would pull out the driver as the two ran across the street, leaving Spaz in the back seat. That's when the dark colored sedan returned as a man got out and opened fire on Spaz, killing him. But how did the officers learn all of this? Because Trent sat down with investigators and told them the whole story. Oh, so shit. technically, Cash Out was the first to slide on 10K, failing the mission so bad not only did one member die, another member ratted. But it wasn't immediately clear Ayo, hey, cash out, you taking a whole L, bruh. Y'all took a whole L. Who so y'all lost the memory, y'all snitched. Actually killed Spaz. Looking at his Instagram. If you gonna be a gay, you gonna fuck around, you gonna find out. You're already doing it, so I got my comments. You're already doing it, so I got my comments, man. The dude riding, y'all done fucked up. Cash out, what's going on? Spaz's last post would read. I don't lost so many of my dogs. I swear this year for y'all. And less than 48 hours later, you died. his comments will be full of broken hearts. Imagine going to run up a sword block and then get shot. Like, you stupid as hell. You stupid. you stupid as hell. Three days after Spaz's death, Cash Out Ace would drop a song called Chibata. In the chorus, he'd say, Swall smoking pack while I'm fucking on Lilia. Swall smoking pack while I'm fucking on Lilia. Come to find out, Lily was Weddle's girl. This was the first time the beef between the two was being put into music, and Ace just made himself a target to one of Houston's top crashes. 19 days after Spaz was killed, 10K would strike. It was 1.30 in the morning when Harris County Sheriff's received multiple calls for shots fired on Francita's Drive. This was Northwest Houston and Cash Out Territory. Deputy yeah, them niggas from 10K don't play, bro. Heartbreaking crime scene. 65-year-old Ramiro Reyes lay in the roadway while his 60. What he do? Three-year-old oh, Alva sat dead in the passenger seat of a purple charger. Fucked Their son-in-law would be found inside of the home alive with a gunshot to the hip. Investigators will learn the couple had spent and killed the wrong. Y'all stay killing the wrong people, bro. The night of the hospital, bedside as Rosalva's elderly mother passed away. They just made it home. What? Side as Rosalva. What's she doing? Investigators will learn the couple had spent the night at the hospital, 
bedside as Rosalva's elderly mother passed away. Mm -mm. They just made it home, still grieving and tired after such a long night. But instead of finding the comfort of their beds, they'd be met with gunfire. Three months would pass. The innocent elderly couple shooter was still unidentified and nobody knew exactly why they were targeted. It was now December 27, 2019, just two days after Christmas and Cash Out Ace was recording a music video in North Houston. It was 9.31 p.m. when the call came in for shots fired. Arriving on scene, two men were found dead, 20-year-old Gonzalo Gonzalez and 22-year-old Jonathan Jimenez. Seven other people were shot at the scene, including 20-year-old Cash Out Ace who was shot in the arm and shot in the head. His Damn. older brother Abel was also with him and shot four times. Damn. Investigators would locate 762, 40 Smith and Wesson, and 9mm shell casings at the scene as victims were transported to local hospitals. Ace would be placed in critical condition and equipped to a breathing machine with a bullet lodged in his head. A week after the mass shooting, investigators Damn. would speak with Ace's brother Abel, who was still recovering in the hospital. Abel would tell investigators Ace set up a music video shoot and the address was sent to only trusted friends through Instagram. Ace had issues with the rapper Wero 10K, who was the known leader of the 10K gang. Abel would Damn. then say Wero and another man named Rico 10K had been threatening Ace for some time now and made threats earlier that day. Abel then said Wero and Rico had killed the old couple in Fallbrook. In fact, Damn. the night they were murdered, Abel received a video call from Rico around 1 in the morning. Abel stated Rico said, yeah, what's up? Where you at? We know you stay in Fallbrook. We know you stay on Pilot Point. Abel told investigators he used to live in Fallbrook with his grandparents, but doesn't live there anymore. When he saw Rico on the video call, he was with multiple individuals with rifles wearing ski masks. Abel would tell investigators he didn't know how they got his address and that after the elderly couple was killed, Weddo and Rico fled to Austin, Texas for a few days to make it look like they weren't in Houston at the time of the shooting. So not only would Ace's brother give motive for Weddo to shoot up the music video, but he'd named Weddo and Rico 10K as the ones responsible in a double murder three months prior. Damn. And now, Five were dead, big time. and investigators would piece it all together as they'd been investigating. Hey, man. So they started beef. They ain't built for this shit. Don't start nothing you all built for it, bro. They ain't built for that. gang for eight months, and witnesses were rushing to come forward. Seven mm. months after Spaz was killed, a female friend of the victim met with investigators claiming Wero 10K and Rico 10K were responsible for killing him. But it wasn't just that. She'd provide details to the murder that hadn't been released to the public and was consistent with surveillance video that no one but investigators saw. Mm. In fact, she only knew about it because Weddo and Rico called her on FaceTime with Rico admitting that he was the driver and Weddo saying he doubled back to get out of the vehicle and finish Spaz off. This was consistent with what Trenton Steele witnessed as he saw the shooter's vehicle come back and a man Damn. get out firing into the back seat of the SUV, killing Spaz. Damn. It would also be learned that the reason Spaz and his friends were hunting for a 10K member was over an argument on Instagram Live. Damn. The investigation took a darker turn as law enforcement. It was in Twitter? Usually it's Twitter, bro. I ain't going to cap. Usually they do this shit on Twitter. Okay. Instagram is the new shit, man. The couple was murdered. Cash out Ace's brother Abel told investigators 10K members found out. Right. Fuck Twitter fingers when you can go live, man. Who want to do Twitter? Nobody want to be a Twitter finger now. You go live and do this shit. The neighborhood where his grandparents lived, but didn't know how they knew. Cell phone records would show in the hours leading up to the shooting. Widow 10K was communicating with his dad and a T-Mobile employee. The dad allegedly texted Widow's mom, Christina, to see if she could find an address associated with a number. 
turns out. Christina previously worked at T-Mobile and reached out to a friend who was currently a manager who used her manager's login to find the address. The phone number belonged to Cash Out Ace's brother Abel and revealed his grandparents' address. Weddle and Rico were yet again trying to up the score after already killing Spaz, and while in the neighborhood of the address they were given, they spotted a purple charger they thought belonged to Abel and followed it home. With Rico driving, Weddle opened fire. Calvin, a member of 10K, would be arrested and would be the first to fold on 10K. He'd tell investors. Ah, oh, man. Now y'all snitching too. Investigators the shit. spotted the music video shoot, so we did a U-turn. Traveling past for the second time, Weddle opened fire with an AK-47 while Rico fired a pistol hanging out of the sunroof, and a third shooter named Roman Wise fired a pistol from the back seat. But that wasn't all. Kelvin was trying hard to get himself a deal, knowing just for driving he'd be facing life, if not worse. He told investigators he was there when Weddo 10K and Rico 10K saw on the news that they killed an elderly couple. But he said they weren't sad, they were happy, figuring they'd killed Abel and Cash Out Ace's grandparents. An overwhelming amount of evidence would lead to the downfall of the 10K gang as everyone involved was arrested and under Texas law, for capital murder, they faced death by execution. Damn. Kelvin, the driver who snitched. Hey, yo. That's crazy. Hey. Around, you find out. On the rest of 10K, took a plea deal and would be sentenced to 20 years in state prison, with three years' time served, leaving him with 17 years left. Under Damn. Texas law, he'll be eligible for parole in the next eight and a half years. Louis Santi, aka Rico 10K, took a deal for 60 years in state prison and will be eligible for parole in 30. Roman Wise would take a plea for 30 years, leaving him eligible for parole in 15. The only one left was the leader of it all, Weddo 10K. 22-year-old Weddo took a plea deal to spare him a death sentence and was Damn. sentenced to life in Texas before being eligible for parole, meaning Weddo would be in his early 60s before even being mm -hmm. considered for freedom. Only 17 years old when he killed Spaz, by 18, he killed a total of five people and showed no sympathy. In fact, Weddo never broke a smile as both pictures and videos of him incarcerated would emerge as he fought this case. A war essentially started Just by imagine, bro. would be finished by Just imagine, bro. by 10k, but leave both sides devastated. Cash Out Ace would have a large portion of his skull removed and speak on his recovery process as he had to learn to walk and talk again. Ace would continue on his career with his brother Abel at his side, both men surprisingly still claiming ties to the Crips and Hoover Street gang, although Abel cooperated against 10K by providing investigators information and saying they were responsible for the elderly couple's murder. Even Trent, who went on the failed hit that left Spaz dead and started the war with 10K, would go on to become a rapper after cooperating with the police against 10K. And finally, the victims. 19-year-old Spaz was killed after the hunter became the hunted. He intended on killing a rival 10K member only to be left behind by his friends and executed in the back of an SUV. The Reyes- Bruh, no love in this shit, bruh. See? No love. This couple, already grieving a loss, were murdered in cold blood after a case of mistaken identity and a suburban gang war. Gonzalo Gonzalez, a 20-year-old University of Houston student that had dreams of filming movies and writing films, would die instantly while recording a music video for a rapper. 22-year-old Jonathan Jimenez, a friend of Ace, was also killed in the hail of gunfire 
at the music video shooting. In the end, everyone took a loss. Nothing came out of this but pain, suffering, and a story that will hopefully grab the attention of someone living a similar Bro, don't do stupid shit, bro. At the end of the day, everybody just ended up in jail, dead, or in a whole damn snitch with no morals, bro. Realistically, do better with your life. Start a career. Do YouTube. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of things to do. They were good at rapping. Songs was was all right. You know what I'm saying? Launch something. Make something better of yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's 41 Pop. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace.